Hello all, very good morning. We were discussing regarding the valvular heart diseases. So in yesterday's topic, we have seen regarding the mitral wall. We have discussed regarding the mitral wall stenosis. We have discussed regarding the mitral wall regurgitation and we have also seen the mitral wall prolapse. And to, in today's class, I would like to discuss you regarding the aortic stenosis. So since we have discussed regarding the valvular heart diseases, I have said to you what is stenosis and what is regurgitation and what is meant by prolapse. So what is meant by stenosis means nothing but the narrowing or constriction of an, any part it is considered as stenosis. So since it is involving the aortic valve, the narrowing of the aortic valve it is considered as aortic stenosis. So if you see we have Semi, two semilunar valves and we have two atrioventricular valves. So, the bicuspid valve which is situated in the left side of the heart, it is also called as mitral valve and the tricuspid valve, it is situated in the right side of the heart and if you see this aortic valve, it is mainly situated at the opening of the aortic arch near the left ventricle. So, this valve, it is acting as an opening and closing door between the ventricle as well as the arch of aorta. What is its main function? Means it, it it will prevent the re-entry of blood which has entered into the arch of aorta into the ventricle. Coming to the function of this aortic valve, its function is mainly to prevent the backflow of the blood into the ventricle. If you clearly see what is this aortic stenosis, so you, I will show you in the diagram here. So this is the arch of aorta and this is the main pulmonary artery which is carrying the deoxygenated blood away from the heart towards the lungs. So if you see here, this one is the left atrium. And this one is the left ventricle, this one is the left atrium and this one is the left ventricle, right ventricle and right atrium as you can see. If you see the aortic wall, it is situated at the opening. It is mainly situated at the opening of the arch of aorta and it is allowing the blood from left ventricle to enter into the arch of aorta and it is preventing the backflow. But during the aortic stenosis, what is happening here? You can see this is the normal way. So, if, if the aortic valve is open in a proper way, the opening is in this way and if it is closed, the closing is in this way. But due to the aortic valve stenosis, it cannot open fully and it cannot even close it fully. So, during which the blood circulation between arch, arch of aorta and left ventricle equilibrium has been disturbed. Coming to the incidence, if you see here, it is the commonest valve disease in the United Kingdom and uh, the risk, it is increasing with the age and 2% of people who are above 65 years of age, they have this echo feature of this aortic stenosis. If you come to the topic here, it is nothing but the narrowing of orifice between the left ventricle and the aorta, it is called as aortic stenosis. This is one of the most commonest disease and serious wall disease problem in the elderly population. So, there are different types of causes. So, we have congenital leaflet malformations and whenever the person is having the rheumatic endocarditis, you can observe. So, if you see, this is the valve here. So, this pulmonary valve due to the stenosis, it is unable to close completely and it is unable to open completely, which is leading to serious illness problems. Coming to the stages of this aortic stenosis. So, according to the staging, they have classified here. In stage 0, if you see, there is no cardiac damage. If the mitra, Even though there is a aortic valve stenosis, but you cannot observe any kind of cardiac damage. But in stage 1, left ventricle damage is there. So, you can see in the picture clearly here, there is no damage. The heart is very healthy. But if you see the stage 1 picture, the left ventricle hypertrophy is present. Means, the left ventricle mass, it has been increased. And if you compare, it is greater than 115 grams per meter square in males. And it is greater than 95 grams per meter square in females. And if you see the left ventricle ejection fraction, if you see the left ventricular ejection fraction, it is less than 50. If you clearly observe here, in stage 1, only the ventricle is getting disturbed and the atrium is fine. And the ejection fraction, if you see the left ventricular ejection fraction, it is less than 50 here. But if, if you come to the stage 2, if you come to the second picture, you can clearly observe here, there is even the left atrium hypertrophy. So, along with the left ventricular hypertrophy, even the left atrium hypertrophy is Increase. So, if you see the left atrium here, the left atrium volume has been increased that is greater than 34 ml per meter square and also you can observe moderate to severe mitral regurgitation. So, why because because since the blood which has entered into the left ventricle, it has to enter into the arch of aorta through this aortic valve. 
since the aortic wall stenosis is present, the blood cannot enter into the arch of aorta sufficiently. What is happening due to the increased presence of the left ventricle, it is damaging the mitral valve and you can observe mitral regurgitation means the backflow of blood from the left ventricle into left atrium which is called as mitral regurgitation. And due to this, you can even observe this atrial fibrillation. If you come to the stage 3 here, here mainly the pulmonary vasculature or even you can observe the tricuspid damage. Due to the backflow of blood from the left atrium into the pulmonary vasculature here, the blood is it is again coming and entering into the right ventricle which is causing the damage to the tricuspid valve which is situated between the right ventricle and right atrium. So, if you see here, just I will explain you what was the circulation, normal circulation. Suppose if you consider this is the heart and you have four chambers. So, uh, right atrium, left atrium, right, ventri right ventricle and left ventricle. So, these are the lungs which were situated right above the heart and this is the body. So, from the body, the deoxygenated blood, it is entering into the right atrium and from the right ventricle the deoxygenated blood it is carried out into the lungs from the lungs the oxygenated blood it is entering into the left atrium and from the left atrium it is entering into the left ventricle again from the left ventricle it is entering into the body so this is how the normal circulation is there so, due to the dysfunction of this aortic valve, so here the valve is not opening properly which is causing the blood to retain in the left ventricle itself. So, when the pressure is increasing in the left ventricle, automatically the pressure is there in the mitral valve which is acting as a valve between the left atrium and left ventricle. So, what will happen? The mitral valve regurgitation is occurring means the blood from the left ventricle, it is instead of going to the body, it is again re-entering into the left atrium. So, from left atrium again the blood is entering into the pulmonary circulation. What is the pulmonary vasculature here? The pulmonary vein, the pulmonary artery and the lungs. So, automatically again the backflow of the blood it is coming and it is disturbing the right ventricle. So, when the right ventricle is being disturbed here the valve between the right atrium and the right ventricle is the called as tricuspid valve. So, this tricuspid valve it is being damaged here. So, that is what you can observe in stage 3. So, here the systolic pulmonary hypertension if you see the pulmonary hypertension it is increasing it is more than 60 mm of Hg. So, even here in stage 3, if you see the stage 2 here only the mitral wall regurgitation is occurring. But in stage 3 even the tricuspid wall regurgitation is occurring. So, here the mitral wall has been damaged and here the tricuspid wall has been damaged in stage 3. And if, and if you see the stage 4 here, the, in stage 4 the right ventricle is completely damaged. So, if there is problem in the left side of the heart, automatically the right side of the heart is also being affected because of the pressure gradient. Because the blood is not going outside and whole blood which is coming from the body, it is circulating only between the heart and the lung which is causing the pulmonary problems, pulmonary edema and complete damage to the heart. So, it is very simple if you understand in stage 0 there is nothing no cardiac damage is present he, I, even though the aortic stenosis is there here the blood flow is maintaining and there is no proper problem here. If you come to the stage when here you can observe the left ventricle damage. So, mainly due to the aortic wall stenosis, the blood it cannot enter into the systemic circulation. So, the blood which has to enter into the systemic circulation, it is retaining in the left ventricle itself, it, which is causing the left ventricular hypertrophy. So, if you again this left ventricular hypertrophy, if you come to the stage 2, it is causing the mitral damage. So, instead of staying in the left ventricle, it is entering into the mitral through mitral valve into the left atrium, which is causing the left atrial hypertrophy. So, here the left side of the heart it has been damaged. So, you can observe the left ventricular hypertrophy and at the same time you can observe the left atrial hypertrophy. So, if there is a hypertrophy in the left side of the heart automatically the pulmonary vascularization it is being disturbed and through pulmonary vascularization again the blood instead of going into the systemic circulation it is regurgitating and even the blood which is there in the right ventricle it cannot enter into the lungs. So, what is happening here? Again, the tricuspid wall regurgitation is occurring. So, again, the blood is leaking from the right ventricle to into the right atrium. So, here the regurgitation it can be moderate to severe and in stage 4 here you can observe the complete damage of right ventricle. So, this is the staging of aortic stenosis. So, hope you understood.
so if you have any queries please drop them in the comment box i'll try to explain you this pathophysiology or the staging of this aortic stenosis again coming to the types of this aortic stenosis so we have four types we have normal we have mild we have moderate and we have severe so in normal if you see here the opening valve size is about 3 to 4 centimeter in mild it is greater than 1.5 centimeter and if you see the moderate it is 1 to 1.5 centimeter and severe it is less than 1 centimeter just see this notch opening so here the blood flow is attained in a normal manner so here the blood flow it can be attained but there is some difficulty here you can see more difficult and here the valve is completely being closed and the blood cannot enter in which you can consider it as in stage 4 you can consider it as in stage 3 stage 2 and stage 0 so this is how the types of aortic stenosis is present Coming to the causes of this aortic stenosis, so we have acquired causes and we have congenital causes. So here acquired causes are mainly due to the degenerative calcification. So if you see here due to the rheumatic heart fever or PJ disease of the bone or end stage of renal failure, you can see this aortic stenosis. Coming to the congenital causes, if you see, if you take the total life birth, so in this total life births, about 1 to 2 percent of the population who are being born, they are having this bicuspid as well as aortic wall problems. And this bicuspid and aortic wall defect, it results mainly in the calcification and fibrosis of these leaflets with reduced valve area means because of the calcification and because of the fibrosis the the valve area it is being reduced and it is coming narrowed so that's what we are calling it as aortic wall stenosis if you see the etiology it is mainly occurring due to the damage that is occurring at the level of valve or above the supravalvular stenosis if there is supravalvular stenosis or it can occur or below the aortic valve also it can occur and nextly degenerative calcified as a result from many years of normal stress on the wall so whenever there is more stress on the wall if it is being prolonged for very long time then you can observe this aortic valve stenosis and the other factors are nothing but IHD IHD means nothing but increase Increased blood pressure and increased lipids in the body and the persons who are having this diabetes mellitus these are some some of the persons who are at the risk for this aortic stenosis and nextly you can observe the inflammatory changes so whenever there is calcium deposition within the wall what will happen means they will cause immobility so they will, whenever they are causing immobility to the leaflets as well as the supporting structures what will happen the exertions will occur and the opening area it is being reduced so here here the inflammatory changes are also causing the aortic stenosis and the persons who are having the rheumatic heart disease so whenever there is rheumatic heart disease the adhesion is occurring means the fusion of the papillary muscles as well as the leaflets are occurring which is leading to the valve stenosis coming to the pathophysiology if you see here due to lots of causes due to different types of causes there is progressive narrowing in the aortic valve orifice means orifice means nothing but the opening of the aortic valve so when the aortic valve orifice it has been narrowed ultimately the pressure is being built in the left ventricle so here when the left ventricular pressure is being built you can observe the left ventricular hypertrophy so when there is left ventricular hypertrophy so there will be stiffness and there will be non-compliant ventricle means the ventricle cannot function as a normal manner so here elevated and diastolic pressure will be there and there will be more pressure on the left atrium so here the left atrium has to work more harder to push the blood from the left left atrium into the left ventricle and also here whenever the left ventricle diastole is occurring the blood which has to enter into the systemic circulation it is again entering into the left atrium which is causing the more pressure in the left atria so here you can observe the back four blood backflow into the left atrium and pulmonary vascularization and you can observe various clinical manifestations so this is the pathophysiology it's very simple as we are discussing so the blood which from the left ventricle which has to enter into the systemic circulation which has to enter into the systemic circulation in, because of the aortic stenosis it is staying in the left ventricle itself so whenever the blood is not entering properly you can observe the increased pressure in the left ventricle and also you can see the left ventricular hypertrophy so here the size of the left ventricle is increased and it cannot function as normal so here what will happen the pressure gradient is increasing so instead of going into systemic circulation the pressure is it is going into the left 
atrium so here you can observe left atrial hypertrophy and from left atrium again it is entering into the pulmonary circulation so whenever it is entering the pulmonary vasculature again you can see the pressure on the tricuspid valve and you can observe the right ventricular hypertrophy so when there is damage of aortic stenosis here the mitral valve is being damaged the pulmonary vasculature is being damaged and the tricuspid valve is being damaged and the entire heart is being damaged and you can observe various types of clinical manifestations so this is the pathophysiology for this aortic stenosis coming to the clinical manifestations of this uh, aortic stenosis so you can observe angina pectoris means there will be chest pain and dyspnea because the pulmonary vasculature is, has been involved and syncope means because of the decreased blood flow to the brain and as well as the body you can observe the syncope dizziness will be there palpitations will be there because of the atrial fibrillations because of the pressure gradient and you can observe the heart failure and even the person can experience sudden death and the bp so here if you see the bp narrow pulse pressure in advanced as systolic bp is decreased and you can also feel the systolic thrill and it is mainly felt at the second intercostal space on the right side of the body and also you can can see there will be slow rising and small volume pulse beat that is felt at the carotid so these are some of the clinical manifestations that you can observe in the aortic stenosis so if you see the symptoms as we are discussing we have three types of cardiac symptoms if it is mild and moderate stenosis usually there will be no types of symptoms involved but if it is severe you can observe the cardinal symptoms so here the, these cardinal symptoms are mainly observed when the cardiac output if you see the cardiac output so if it is not meeting the demand then you can observe this type of symptoms so there will be personal dyspnea and even you can observe the angina so whenever there is more pressure on the ventricle left ventricle here already the left ventricle is hypertrophied and the demand it is increasing because the body is not getting sufficient amount of blood so what will happen due to the vigorous beating due to the vigorous function of the left ventricle you can see the angina nothing but chest pain and also you can see the exertional syncope so these are some of the cardinal symptoms and even the person go for sudden death and there will be episodes of acute pulmonary edema so these are some of the features that are mainly observed in the aortic stenosis coming to the investigation part here we are mainly going for the history and as well as physical examination we are doing the ecg means we are doing the chest x-ray we are doing cardiac catheterization mainly to measure we are doing the cardiac catheterization mainly to measure the pulmonary capillary wedge pressure and left atrial pressure and echocardiogram so these are all some of the investigations that are performed in the aortic stenosis not only in aortic stenosis generally these are done in the valvular heart diseases coming to the medical management if you see we are mainly giving them the beta blocker mainly to reduce the myocardial demand so what it will do means it will reduce the myocardial or demand and what it will do means it will improve the coronary blood flow so that the heart will get sufficient amount of blood and also we are giving the loop diuretics which is relieving the patient from the hypervolemia and also we are giving the digoxin whenever the, if the person is experiencing severe heart failure symptoms if the patient is going under the severe condition we have to avoid the drugs which reduce the afterload so for example for this uh, uh, afterload reducing drugs they are nitroglyceride ac inhibitors so what he will do if we give these types of drugs in this situation here the person will enter into the most worsened situation and there are chances of death also so if you see the surgical management here mainly they are going for the balloon aortic valvoplasty and aortic wall replacement which is also known as avr so in this uh, balloon aortic valvoplasty what they are doing using the catheter they are entering in near the aortic area and they are keeping a catheter the balloon and they are they are placing the catheter in the position and they are inflating the balloon where the aortic valve it is being wide open and the blood flow is established again so this is the management that is done in the aortic stenosis with this i would like to end the topic here thank you so much for watching hope you understood if you like the content please like share and subscribe the channel and, and follow my next videos to know the nursing management for this aortic stenosis and as well as valvular heart diseases Thank you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your patience. Please like, share and subscribe and drop your comments so that I can understand whether the content is being reached to you or not. And if you have any changes, please let me know. Thank you.